Thank you so much, Saskia, and thank you everyone for coming along. Uh, I'm really excited to be presenting here at Uzar in Brisbane, uh, my hometown. So um, yeah, it's just really good to be here, and it's been a great week, so thanks everyone for being awesome. Um, today I'm going to be talking about some work I did in my PhD, um, and this is about finding the best locations for facilities um, using this Max Cover. Um, sorry, one sec, my slides aren't showing up on my computer. This is very annoying. What? Oh, well, it's going to have to bear with it. Okay, and um, yeah, and if you'd like to follow along with the slides, um, you can just go to bit.ly slash maxcover, and um, yeah. So, oh, come, there we are, all right. Now, um, can someone tell me what this symbol is, just quickly, just shout it out. RSSP. No. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Next question, someone, come on. Yes, thank you. Wi-Fi. Okay, good. So has anyone here used the free public Wi-Fi in Brisbane? Raise your hand. Okay, that's like more people than I thought. This is good, but I think we could probably get this whole room covered. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft a little story to think about how could we maximize the coverage of public free Wi-Fi in Brisbane and what are some ways that we could think about doing that uh, and some ways that we can do that using um, publicly accessible data that's made accessible um, by the Brisbane government. So some fun facts about Wi-Fi. It was actually invented in Australia by CSIRO. Uh, thank you, Murray Cameron, for giving me some good details on this. Um, but basically, we uh, beat America to the punch by about six months with an international patent. And uh, as a result, Australia has really benefited from that. Um, and the typical range is about 42 to 92 meters uh, for your typical Wi-Fi router, and they cost around about $100. You can probably find them a little bit cheaper, but just some quick facts to help frame this story. So Wi-Fi in Brisbane. Um, we have about 240 of these public Wi-Fi spots in Brisbane. We've got a latitude and longitude. We've got information about the, the name of the place. A lot of them are in libraries or in squares or in gardens. And uh, if we have just a quick look at the map here in Brisbane, we have a bad internet connection. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the irony is not lost on me. Give me one moment. Um, I have a backup. I said I did have a backup. All right. This might have been a nightmare I had like a couple of like years ago, and uh, but and for whatever reason, this is not working. Cool. Hey, hey, look at that. Who's got Wi-Fi? Me. Um, all right. Um, so now we see these slides here in. Brisbane, so we see that we've got these spots here. A lot of them are centered around the city, and uh, this area here is where we are here at the conference. Okay, and so where do we want to cover? So one place I think that would be really good to cover is actually a bus stop. If you think about this, if you're trying to cover Wi-Fi as you're walking down the street, then you're probably going to walk through the Wi-Fi. It's going to be great, then it's going to go, but a place where you're pretty idle is a bus stop, and it'd be pretty good if you had some kind of, you know, motivation, get some free Wi-Fi, you know, stream a couple of things from Netflix, just get good advantage of that. Uh, I've trimmed down these bus stops just so we look at a reasonable number, but we have about 2,500 of these bus stops in Brisbane that we're looking at. And to give you a quick idea of where these are, this is sort of the rough inner city-ish region of Brisbane that also happens to contain most of the places I've lived in Brisbane. Um, and the places to put them, we actually, the Brisbane government makes every single property in Brisbane available online for free, uh, which is awesome. And I've just trimmed these down to be within about 100 metres of a bus stop, just so we have a sane number of properties to look at, and we're sort of getting close to that range of Wi-Fi. And we have about 40,000 properties. And this is where they are in Brisbane. This is sort of that rough six-ish kilometer radius from the center of Brisbane. So like, I've introduced these properties and these Wi-Fi and the stops, but like, what are we trying to do? Let's just quickly recap. Um, sorry. Uh, anyway, um, okay. so let's... Uh, Select some properties, uh, and we're going to provide Wi-Fi to the most bus stops. 
And if we reframe that a little bit, you can think about this in another way, and you could say we want to maximize the Wi-Fi coverage on bus stops, uh, where coverage is the number of things that are within 92 meters of Wi-Fi. And if you think about it, like you're trying to maximize something like this, you can think of it as an optimization problem, maybe. Uh, and it is. It's the maximal covering location problem um, by Richard Church and Charles Revell. And it's an optimization problem from 1974. So this is good. Like, established problem. We've got the data. OK, cool. I've got the data. I've got the problem. It's going to be good. This is roughly what the problem is saying, is that we want to maximize the number of places that are covered, xj, um, for n facilities that we're going to place. And basically, every facility that we place has to cover at least one um, has to cover at least one, say, bus stop. So we got this problem. We got the data, and there's an R package for that, right? No, there isn't, and it sucked. Um, all right, so, so it was like this really annoying problem where I was like, great, I got this problem. It's from the 70s, and there's like quite a few papers. There's actually like 1,500 citations of this maximal covering location problem, and there's just no R package for it, and it was really annoying. And so I'd like to quote Thomas Lumley here, who a few days ago said, people have tried to solve this using regular expressions, but now they have two problems. And I'd like to also say that if you try to solve a problem using optimization, you also have two problems. <laughs> so the problem is that you actually need to calculate a lot of distances between all of these places. So if you think about it, it's 40,000 properties by, say, 2,500 bus stops, including all the Wi-Fi, you're starting to get a lot of distances. And then you've got to get that into some sort of binary matrix, which you then need to work out how to fit into the appropriate size design matrix to feed to an optimization API, which may or may not differ depending on the type of um, optimization API. I'm looking at UIBM. Um, and then you have to work out how to summarize the output from these things. And this is kind of annoying, right? It's sort of like you're like going through this problem, and I'm like, okay, I got this problem, I'm going to go along, and then it's just like the wrong thing happened, and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. And then I was getting closer and closer, and I like, then I get like just snagged, and it's really annoying. And what I want is sort of this this pit of success kind of idea, where you can just kind of do the right thing. And so the idea is, you know, like you just present it with the problem, and you just smash it, and then you just like lob it into a bin like <laughs> 60 meters away, and it's great, and that'll just always happen. So I wrote a package called MaxCover to help do this. So what we have is we have these existing facilities. We have these proposed facilities. We have our users or our targets, uh, which are our stops. And we have some rough distance of 92 meters. And say we want to add 100 new Wi-Fi spots to Brisbane. So what you don't have to worry about now is you don't have to worry about calculating distances, creating matrices, talking to a solver, trying to extract the solver results back out, which, fun fact, it's just a binary vector. Have, like, you know, that's fun. Um, and then summarize these results. So some design principles to focus on here. Uh, you should be providing the data. You've got the data. You've got the problem. So you should get some data back out. And um, this is actually a relatively rigid design. I haven't designed this to be flexible so you can add extra constraints. This is just specifically to solve this one problem and do it well and designed for humans in the process as well. So this should be easy to use. So let's start. Uh, if we look at our, say, if we want to get the coverage of our Wi-Fi, just get a quick sense of, OK, given the data we've looked at, what's our coverage? We use the coverage function. We take our nearest data, so nearest Wi-Fi to the stops. And using some distance cutoff, we see that the number of things covered is about 261. And we have more information. The proportion of things covered is about 10%. And then we fit the model. So we say max underscore coverage. We provide the existing facilities, proposed facilities, users, the distance cutoff, and the number of things added. And we fit that. It takes about 20 seconds. That's great. Um, we get some overall summary. It says, hey, hands up who's written like a print summary for a model. Anyone in here? Yeah, it's like much harder than you think, right? Yeah, OK, all right. So this is like me showing this is great. And, um, and then you can do summary on this as well, and you get a different print method. Um, and you get these, uh, so you get, like the number of facilities you've added, and you get this kind of nice human readable thing, which is good. So we see that we've covered now 710, and previously we had 261 that, that were covered. So our coverage has gone up to nearly 29% from 10% by just adding 100 more, so that's great. Uh, and then what is in the model, it's actually uh, a special max cover object, but it's also just a regular data frame. So we have information on the distance cut off, the number of things added, which users were affected, uh, which facilities were selected, and other information 
So if we just look at the summary, we see, okay, this is the summary information, so similar to the initial coverage. Um, and then we get a data frame of the users affected, so we have another 449 stops that were affected, and then we get a data frame of all of those, along with some distance information. Augmented users, this is borrowing a little bit from this idea of Broom, where we take our initial users and we augment it with some additional information from the data, so the distances to the nearest facility now. And we also get the location, uh, which facilities were selected, so 100 facilities there. And if we just look at these facilities, what's always really nice about this is that when you plot something on a map and it like shows up where you think, so this is a map of the bus stops and we can see this green, um, this green circle here is a new facility. Um, and yeah, so this is working, this is doing what we expect. And what if you want more Wi-Fi? So let's say like, we don't just want to place like 100, we want to place like 100, 200, 300 and so on then one approach you can take is to use per, and you just wrap this function and run it multiple times. And we can see this takes about 220 seconds, which is still okay, it's still reasonably fast. Um, and when you're using this many models, you can then bind this information together, um, and then you get a summary of the number of things added, 0, 100, 200, and so on, the number of things covered. And looking at text is okay, but let's look at a plot. So we can see the coverage changes as we're placing more, it's sort of increasing at a pretty nice rate, and we're actually getting pretty close to 100% coverage if we place 1,000 Wi-Fi routers. So, not bad, right? And we can see that the average distance to a Wi-Fi router is also decreasing from each of these um, bus stops as well. So this is good, as you would expect, as you get close to 100% coverage, you are for sure getting less than 100 meters away. And this is where the new locations are, again, just to show we can look at this and it is doing something sane and putting them where we would like to cover these stops. Always good. So what does this mean? It means that from 261 stops covered, about 10%, if we add 100 Wi-Fi spots, we get 10, uh, like it's about, say, $10,000-ish. Um, then we cover 710, or um, so it's 449 more stops, and if we add 1,000 Wi-Fi spots and spend about, if, if we add about 1,000, we spend about 100 grand, then we cover nearly 99%, an extra 2,000 stops. Um, and what does this, what else can this be used for? So this was actually applied in some research to place automated external defibrillators in Switzerland, and so there's a link to this article here. Um, I'm very, very grateful for the research group in Switzerland to introduce me to this problem uh, and show how we can place these external, uh, external defibrillators so that we can start to save, um, save lives. If you place these within 100 meters of where a cardiac arrest occurs and then the response time is within, say, two minutes and this person has a much higher chance of surviving. So this has a real application and um, it's not just used for improving Wi-Fi and as we saw earlier, we could use this to improve opioid uh, facility placement, and it's a really good general problem. <coughs> so we have other things we could look at, placing police stations or mobile phone towers, or if you're looking at improving animal surveillance and more. Uh, from here, uh, I'd like to really improve the speed, um, improving the way that distance is calculated, so using the Geodist R package by Mark Padgham. I'd like to internalize more of these functions into RCPP, um, so that, um, so that uh, it can uh, just handle things quicker and look at adding more solvers to use, say, say coin OR or CPLEX, uh, and also looking at more complex distances, so roads or paths, uh, and maybe looking at also improving the speed using the future package. Um, I'm also trying to look at maybe, thank you, um, extending this to allow more of a roll your own approach so you could maybe have more flexible approaches. This is a tricky problem because uh, as it turns out optimization is really hard uh, and I don't just want to, like I then have to think about an additional grammar for how that would work and that's a difficult problem. And also thinking about adding a shiny app to facilitate usage by people who aren't our programmers. Um, so, for example, another thing that we could change with the API so you don't have to use per to map this multiple times, having some vectorized approach here for the number of things added, um, for example, and a more flexible, flexible approach might look like this, where you first calculate your coverage distances, then you add some distance cutoff, and you add a distance, say, for example, A to K, 
This is one thing we didn't think about with Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is stronger if you're next to the router, and it gets worse as you get further away from it. So adding some kind of decay is a possibility as well. Um, but as you start to extend your model, you can start to get more and more complex. So I'm um, keen to work with other people on this type of solution. Um, designing APIs is hard. And yeah. I'd like to thank the NUMBAC group at Monash University, and in particular, Rob Hyman and Di Cook. Uh, I consider myself an incredibly lucky postdoc. I get to work on code to solve real problems like this, and I'd just like to thank them so much for that opportunity. And if you'd like to learn more, you can check out maxcover.njtina.com, or you can ping me on Twitter or GitHub. And yeah, how am I going for time? You're fine. We can actually thank you. Okay. <laughs>so this gets, uh, so the question was could we look at other types of distances instead of just Euclidean distance um, but say a walking distance or maybe a driving distance or something like that um, the answer is initially no because Google uh, if you want to have the access to Google APIs it, it gets hard to calculate that sort of thing but then thanks to Mark Padgham and a really great team there's a great set of packages um, using OpenStreetMap and you can basically create a graph of a road network or and then you can use that to calculate distances and um, so this will be really good in urban areas it would hmm? uh, Mark Padgham I believe it's under yes yeah, so it's OSM data and OSM plotter I believe Mark are you in the room yes Dodger, Dodger. oh yes yeah, so Dodger is the one yes yeah, so Dodger will help uh, calculate the distances and um, yeah so it's really exciting stuff and so it's not just assuming that you can you know fly through a building um, and yeah. One more question. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, yes, John Cook, Andrew Lewis. Can you, the algorithm, cope with waiting the bus stop because of the number of people who use that bus stop in a day? Uh, at the moment, I no. Oh, sorry, thank you. Uh, so the, the question was can you think about waiting a bus stop so that bus stops that a, uh, they get more traffic would be weighted higher? Uh, at the moment, no, the only way I could think to do that would be to just replicate the bus stop like a certain number of times in the data set and blow that out so it gets more likely to be covered, but it's not really, that's like a bit of a, like a workaround. It's not explicitly considered in the model. Um, yeah. Cool. Right, that's, thank you for joining. Thank you very much.